What's up everybody, welcome to part 15 of our Python for Finance tutorial series as well as part 3 of the Quantopian section of that series. Uh, in the last tutorial we learned how to kind of get a hold of our leverage and make sure that wasn't getting out of hand and now in this tutorial what we're going to cover is the schedule function because in the last one we saw despite getting control of our leverage we were still making like way too many trades in a day. We really just want to make like one trade a day. Um, and, and, and with this, especially when we're addressing basically a simple moving average crossover of one day, um, this is one example of something you might want to do just like once a day. But with the schedule function, what that allows you to do is schedule functions to occur daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, you know, like whatever you need. Um, they can let you, I'm not positive on the yearly, so I'll t I take that back. <laughs> I'm not 100% on that. Um, but anyway, it lets you schedule functions. So... What we're going to do is work on that. So now what we're going to do is um, we're literally just going to write schedule underscore function and begin. Schedule function, again, like some of the other magical things like get open orders, um, it just simply exists. Okay, it's like, again, from Quantopian import asterisk. That's what we're going to pretend we've done. So we can see the parameters here. A function, you need a date rule, a time rule, and half days equals true or half days if you want. Half, the half days is like sometimes the market will just close early. So for example, you might <clears throat> you might think that you're gonna, cause what you can do with a time rule is you can, you can offset things. So you could offset market close by two hours. And you might think that's always going to be, you know, still after noon, right? Um, but on a half day, that's not true. So maybe you're thinking, okay, I wanna trade at 1 p.m. Eastern every time, so I'm gonna do such and such or whatever. Um, but on half days, you won't be trading at that same exact time. So you might not want to trade during half days. <laughs> That's just me making up a scenario. I don't know. Um, anyway, I can't imagine too many other scenarios where half days would matter that much to you. But anyways, it's there if you need it. So obviously, somebody needed it. So anyway, schedule function, you just pick whatever function you want to schedule. So in this case, say, for example, we want to have a function that runs daily and, or just a function that runs and does something at all. Like, um, we're going to call this one define, um, mo uh, we'll call this MA crossover handling. Okay, and let's say this function does something, right? Um, this function will not run. Like, handle data is just known by Quantopian to be a function that is going to run every day, or, or every period, rather. And in this case, actually, it's every minute. <clears throat> MA crossover handling, however, that's a custom one. That's our own. So it's not going to run that automatically. We have to call it into to, to run. So that's the way we do that is with schedule function. Because it's not like a regular Python program. Like if you just did like this and you, and you called it down here, um, I don't even know what's going to happen, but it's not going to run this function every day. It's probably only, it would, even in Python terms, it would only run it once. So anyway, <clears throat> the way we're going to do is with schedule function. So the function we're going to schedule is MA crossover handling. And then we've got um, date rules. So date underscore rules. This is when do you want this to run? So you've got these choices. Like I said, I guess I was right. You can't run it yearly. So daily, weekly, either week start or weekend. That's awesome. Month start or month end. We're going to do every day. Um, and we'll, we're not going to pass any parameters, but you can do offsets here, I'm pretty sure. Um, now, we're also going to add time rules, so time underscore rules, and let's see if this is going to let, yeah, okay, so just, just so I can have proper space, because I'm like all zoomed in here, um, you, you don't need to enter down here, but anyways, um, time rules dot, and we want to do, you have two options, market open or market close. We're going to say market open, and then, and then you have an offset here, so this is like, an offset. So the default is one minute after the market open. So I'm going to say hours equals one. So this would be one hour after the market opens. Um, if you do market close, hours one would be one hour before the close. Okay. So one of them is after the time. One of them is like before the time. Like it's not going to hours one. You don't have to do like market close hours minus one. It it's, goes the other way. Anyway, at least I'm pretty sure on that one. Um, now, Okay, so it's going to call MA crossover handling to happen every day at market open one hour after. So one hour after market open. Cool. So now we're ready to build this function. Now, <clears throat> this function basically is going to do 
everything that handle data does. And um, handle data actually becomes irrelevant <laughs> at this point because we're going to just take everything from it. So I'm just going to highlight everything, cut, and paste. And we're just going to delete handle data. We don't even need it anymore. But you can see here, we're referencing context and we're also referencing data. So we need to make sure that we're passing context data um, into here. Otherwise, we've got everything we need. Now, one major bonus that we're going to see here is that this is going to run way faster than um, than before. I'm going to build it just to check for syntax errors. Sure enough. Um, what do you say? Line seven. Did I not close this off or something? No, I did. Here, right? For some reason, this has gotten all... all what? Let's see. Is it not? Okay, so we have, we did not close this off. Man, that zoom, when I zoomed out, it actually gave me, I'm pretty sure like line five was separated. Anyway, let's check again. And we'll hit less here. Okay, so you can already see it's like just zooming by. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel and we'll run the full back test just so we can see our daily trades. Um, but you can see it's going much faster because now it's just, it's calculating those SMAs, it's looking at prices, really one time a day rather than every minute, which is making a huge difference in our performance. Um, because not every strategy needs to check every minute, okay? So, okay, so yeah, we've got, we, we've done much better. Coming back down to the transactions, these should be two million. Yeah, about two million, two million, because every time again, we already explained it. So cool, and this one's a little larger just simply because we've made, we've made money, okay? So, uh, cool. So that is enough for just a simple strategy, the back tester, and you, again, you can look at all kinds of stuff like your transaction details, your positions, your, any log output. I don't, oh, we do. I guess, are we still logging? Um, I thought I got rid of logging the, oh, no, we're still logging the uh, history. Um, anyway, actually, we can just delete that. <clears throat> so we're doing all that. Um, so yeah, so so that's the schedule function. That's all the strategy kind of stuff. A real basic strategy, a nice back test. But really, the back test. I mean, the back test is seeming to suggest that this might actually be a good strategy, and we could even try it on like a different uh, company. So, so, so like let's do um, rather than Apple, let's do eBay. Cool. And I think that other back test is actually running. Let's see if I can cancel that. Let's just delete. I wonder if it's in progress and you hit delete if it stops the progress. I don't know. It's a mystery of life, y'all. So so let's run this one. Let's see how we do. This was with eBay. Ooh, we're not doing so hot. <laughs> Yikes. Oh. All right. <laughs> Mine's 47%. Oh, okay. I wonder how eBay did in that time. Did eBay lose 47%? You could, you could, part of your custom data could be the percent change for the actual company. You can also even change your benchmark. I, uh, let's see if I can find benchmark in here real quick. Benchmark. Setting a custom benchmark. Set bench, oh, this is so great. I think, let's, I wonder if I can just do SID, but symbol. Let's go to the algorithm here. Um, initialize, boom. Um, this shouldn't be Apple, but oh well. Symbol, that's unfortunate. I wonder if we can pass a SID rather than this, because I think symbol something returns a SID. Let's let's try that. Let's see if we can get. Let's see if we can do that. Looks good. So the benchmark is eBay, and this is our algorithm. So as you can see, eBay is doing. Ebay's like just fine. I mean, it's not doing the greatest, but, <laughs> but yeah, we're doing horrible. Okay, so obviously it's not good for all of the companies. Um, okay, so anyways, that's enough for now. In the coming tutorials, we're actually going to leave the algorithms behind for now, and we're going to play in the notebook environment, which is arguably really the place you, you should start in when you're starting a strategy. I just still kind of think algorithms is good to get your feet just a little wet on the whole kind of platform. Um, and then, yeah, it's time to probably dive into notebooks because once you get to this point, okay, now you're going to really start thinking about developing a strategy. Um, and the way that you're going to do that is, is most likely through notebooks. So anyways, that's what you have to look forward to. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, anything black box, magical, whatever, uh, let me know below. I'll do my best to help you out. Um, otherwise, I will see you in another tutorial.